Hello, I'm Bernie Hayes. Today's guest is Loretta Redman, and we'll be talking about black inventions and black history today on The Bernie Hayes Show. Welcome back. My guest is Loretta Redmond. Loretta Redmond, welcome. Uh, how did, what's the name of the organization? You... Museum of Black Inventors. And you're the founder. And... Founder and currently executive director. That's wonderful. T t what, tell us what it is. Uh, the Museum of Black Inventors is an organization, nonprofit organization, that's basically created to teach and educate uh, everyone, the world, about African American mm -hmm. contributions in the form of inventions. Are people amazed at some of the inventions that were discovered Always. by African Americans? Always. 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 Yes, we are people who are just surprised. I know. Usually Black History Month, they'll feature Garrett Morgan, and then they'll feature the different things that uh, uh, only a few African Americans know about. Right. You know, and, and like I said, Garrett Morgan is one of the, the two. And uh, I, I, I saw, in fact, they, when I was teaching at Webster, I used to show the, my students the black inventors, you know, and there were hundreds of them. Hundreds. And they're, they're just totally shocked. Yes. Well, tell us how you got into it and then why you, you want this, well, to, this information known. It's interesting because um, a number of years ago, around 1995, I was at a book fair at St. Louis University, mm -hmm. and I came across a book by uh, Burt McKinley, uh, Jr., and it was titled Black Inventors of America. And I just started thumbing through the book, and as I got towards the end of the book, it just had like several pages, full pages of black inventors, their patent dates, and the descriptions of their inventions. And I was just overwhelmed and just amazed. And at first I was really, really happy, and then I got sort of angry because I thought, I've gone through elementary school, high school, college, and I've only heard, like you just said, about a few African-American yeah. inventors. Yeah. So it's just sort of put some passion within me to... Uh, I'm glad it did. Uh, Louis Latimer, you know, people don't know who Louis Latimer or they know about Thomas Edison. They know about the electric lights and then we we're sitting here on, on all this uh, fluorescent lighting and, yes. and candle power and don't know what, what he contributed to, to, yes. to Edison. And you know, it's Louis Latimer actually is responsible for the filament. Yes, that's what I'm saying. That, that makes the light burn. Is, that enables it to burn. Precisely. Exactly. Yeah. And it doesn't sound like a lot of important information, but it's extraordinarily important. Precisely. Yeah. And uh, so we have some books here. Uh, first, they're called Black Stars, African American Inventors. Uh, could you give us a little bit of history on this book and why? why? Sure. It. it pretty much focuses on mm -hmm. uh, inventors like um, Madam C.J. Walker. Okay. We're familiar with Madam C.J. Walker and sure. her invention of hair care products mm -hmm. and so forth. And recently there was, I believe, a, a biop or a movie that was done on uh, Madam C.J. Walker. Right. Mm -hmm. First millionaire female ever wow. and was African-American. A lot of people didn't know that. And then it just goes on to talk about, of course, here we've got... Um, Louis Latimer, we also have the inventor of the shoe lasting machine, mm -hmm. Jan Metzinger. Yeah, Metzinger. Yes, yeah. and uh, awesome. A lot of people don't understand, well, why is that important? Because it, now we have soles on the bottom of our shoes right. that enable us to not be walking on the ground. Not walking on rocks. And, right, and rocks gravel. and dirt. <laughs> and of course, a lot of our inventions date back to the 1800s, but we've got 21st century inventors as well. Right. So. Could you name some of the few, uh, some of those on the back of the book? On the back of the book, yes. We have Benjamin Banneker. We've got uh, Lewis Howard Lattimore we just spoke about. Mm -hmm. We've got, uh, of course, Garrett Morgan. And a lot of people know about Garrett Morgan with the inventions of the traffic signal. Yeah, but gas mask. But, uh, yeah, a lot of people don't realize the gas mask was another important invention. Yeah. And the replica that we have on display uh, in our traveling exhibit is the same gas mask replica that was used during the civil rights movement when the blacks were protesting sure. for our civil rights and they were hosed down by the uh, National Guard. Right. And they're wearing a gas mask that 
That's Rebecca right. Morgan's. Absolutely. Unbelievable. That's wonderful. Absolutely. And we've got Frederick McKinley Jones, mm -hmm. uh, responsible for a lot of our refrigerated inventions, uh, enabling us to keep our products and, and items in the refrigerator cold. And through the trucks also. And the trucks. Right. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. trucks, yeah. Um, there's just so many of them that we uh, can pay, pay homage to now. So can I get this book? Can people buy this book? You know what, this, this book? book was a gift to me, and mm -hmm. it is still available. You can get it on Amazon. All the books here are still available, and okay. they are available uh, on Amazon and other mm -hmm. outlets as well. This is wonderful. That's great. How can one reach you and get more information from you? Um, we can be reached by phone mm -hmm. at 314-313-9071, as well as on our website, uh, blackinventors.org. Okay. As well. This is great. You know, this is so, so much in, in, in this book. Elijah McCoy. That's, yeah. that's the real McCoy, right? Yeah, a lot of people don't realize that, too. <laughs> that saying that we use, well, I only want the real McCoy. Right. Yeah, he's responsible for that. Daniel Hale Williams, Open Heart Surgery. You are very familiar with so many of our inventors just in yeah. the conversation we've been having. And I, yeah. I'd like for most people to be able to do that and communicate about it as well. And Granville T. Woods. Granville that, T. Woods was yeah. awesome. Uh, he worked with Alexander Graham Bell. Right. An invention of the uh, telephone. The telephone. Yeah, sure. Sure. Unbelievable. I mean, there's so much. George Washington Carver, we, that's one of the people we hear about it during February, right. Black History Month, but he did right. so many things. Right. And there's so many names here that someone should really get this book just to find out. Charles Richard Drew. Yes, Charles, Charles Drew. Drew and the Blood Bank. The Blood Bank, yes. Yeah. And Red just, Cross. Just awesome uh, inventions and creations that enable uh, us to expand upon improvements today. Mm -hmm. You know, who knew getting a blood transfusion and being able to uh, save lives yes. would be created by... Uh, and during the war, awesome. it was really essential that uh, they have blood plasma and so forth. Absolutely. And all of us from a black man. Absolutely. Absolutely. And some of the white soldiers wouldn't take the blood of black people, but uh, they they took the plasma and uh, saved their lives. And didn't even realize. Isn't that unbelievable? You know, yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. What? Uh, tell us about the traveling exhibits that you have. Where do you go and how how one but one book one? Okay. Well, you can actually book our traveling exhibit on mm. online through our website, okay. or you can call us, and um, we travel around to schools. Uh, both elementary, middle, college, universities, high mm -hmm. schools, uh, corporations, <clears throat> local and out of state. We've traveled quite a bit. Uh, Kraft Foods in Chicago. Um, we've traveled to um, Wells Fargo, MasterCard. Wow. Uh, yes, many corporations. And, you know, it's important, Bernie, because they're working to incorporate diversity in the workplace. Yes. And to highlight African-American inventors, even if it's doing just February, it's still... Uh, an honor. What will a typical exhibit look like? Our typical exhibit is actually very large. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, two-sided freestanding. Uh, we don't require the um, organizations to provide any support for us to mm -hmm. post or, or mount our exhibit. It's freestanding, two-sided. Um, it takes up about Let's say this, you know the 12 by 12 booths that you see at the expos? Yes. We use about 10 of those wow. in order to showcase our exhibit. So there's a lot, and of, then a lot, we, lot of square footage. A lot of square footage. <laughs> and it's, you want to make it easy so that people can walk around and, and, and read and see the photographs, documentations, drawings, and uh, just learn as much as they can in a, an environment. It takes about an hour to get through the entire exhibit if you're going to really, truly look at the exhibit and to read. That's really wonderful. Yes. And uh, I want, we have two other books here we're going to be talking about during our next segment. But it's so much fun just talking to you and, and uh, understanding why you think it's important for people to know what you have in these exhibits. Sure. Black American inventors, African American inventors are unbelievable. And we're going to take a short break. We're at the New Life Evangelistic Center at 2428 Woodson Road in Overland, Missouri. And my guest is Loretta Redmond, and we'll be talking about black inventors as we continue. We'll be back after this. You may be facing a wide range of problems of all different sizes, shapes, colors, 
And, and you just feel like you're totally pressed from every direction at this particular moment. I would encourage you to pick up your Bible. It's a sharp two-edged sword that God wants to use to help you to know that you are more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus who strengthens you. It's a sharp two-edged sword. On the one side, you'll learn to praise God and trust Him in the midst of your own personal needs. On the other side, you'll see the need for social justice. You'll see the need to feed the hungry, to help the homeless, to help the downtrodden. It's a sharp two-edged sword. So yes, we need to be personally strengthened as we read the Word of God, as we begin to pray, as we trust God in, the, in our midst of our own personal needs. But the other side of that sword is that we uh, be motivated to really help those who are in need. Now, if we try to help people that are in need over and over, that's great. But if we do it out of our own strength, we're going to get tired out, burned out, worn out. Take it from someone who's been at it for 51 years. How can I keep going day after day? By finding new strength in our resurrected Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God, reading the Word of God, walking in the midst of God's creation where there's so much variety and praising Him in spite of all the trials and tribulations. Because no matter how high the problem may be or no matter how low it goes, for example, Romans chapter 8. Yes, it starts out in verse 1, there's no condemnation, ends that there's no separation. No separation from the love of God. That no matter how high we go, no matter how low we go, no matter how far or wide we go, God's love is there. Move forth in the love of God. Experience the power of God. Let the Spirit of God show you needs where you can be an answer to someone's prayer who's crying out to the Lord at this particular moment. They may be homeless, they may be hungry, they may have a personal need, they may be lonely. But you can be God's instrument to bring hope and help to so many people that are suffering at this particular time. Yes, the Word of God works. Faith works. Let's experience it. Let's live it. When you partner with New Life Evangelistic Center, you impact so many people. The economy in this country is really hurting so many all over. And we're seeing the number of people who are experiencing homelessness rise. You can make a difference today by giving your gift online at newlifeevangelisticcenter.org. newlifeevangelisticcenter.org. Make a real Big change in the lives of so many. Welcome back. I'm Bernie Hayes. My guest is Loretta uh, Redmond, and we're talking about Black Inventors. She is the organizer, I'm sorry, the creator, the, what is it? The, uh, the, the founder. Founder, founder is the word I'm looking for. Yeah. Of, uh, the Black Inventors. Um, here's another book that uh, you brought with us called Five Notable Inventors. Could you tell us who they are and uh, what, the, what their significance? You've got uh, Madam C.J. Walker. Mm -hmm. Of course, we just talked about her a little bit. You've got Garrett Morgan here, uh, Jan Metzler, uh, Elijah McCoy. Okay, this is also that they can purchase this book through your facilities? Absolutely. They can purchase this actually, besides being online uh, through the bookstores and Amazon, they can purchase this one directly from the Museum of Black Inventors. Okay. Yes. And uh, once again, we need to know that name and number, your phone number. Sure. Name. Uh, the Museum of Black Inventors website, blackinventors.org, mm -hmm. and the phone number is 314-313-9071. Ms. Redmond, do parents actually purchase these books and then... Do you hear any good stories, any, any follow-up stories that, uh, uh, from, from the books? That's a very good question. What uh, has happened in the past, we've had, when on site at schools, we've had schools purchase the books, and one particular school actually put on a production where they had the students dress up in the period of um, the black inventor. And, mm -hmm. so for example, there was a Garrett Morgan that someone dressed up as, and it was really interesting. So yes, in answer to your question, yes, they take it a step further. Are they surprised that uh, so many different people, like we talk about refrigeration and refrigerated trucks and meat storage and so forth, uh, perishable foods being saved because of an African-American inventor, are they astonished or what? When people really realize that some of the things that they pass in everyday life, they're right there, it was, uh, I, Invented by an African American man or female, well, a female. Uh, uh, so what, what's their reaction mostly? Usually, like you said, astonished. They're usually mm -hmm. surprised. Uh, and to my surprise, also, there's quite a few people that are not African Americans that are familiar with 
a lot of mm -hmm. the black inventors. Not as many as we'd like to see, but yes, people are usually astonished, they're surprised, and uh, proud. You see a lot of uh, our seniors that sometimes they have come to tears because they mm -hmm. can remember a time in a period that wasn't good for African Americans. And it just <clears throat> makes them really happy to see in their lifetime mm -hmm. that uh, African Americans, you know, blacks are being recognized for their contributions that helped build the country. Yeah, the straightening comb. Absolutely. Hot, hot comb yes. and, and curlers, hair curlers, yes. ironing board. The ironing board. Uh, a lot of people don't know that Sarah Boone was responsible for the uh, apparatus that enabled us to iron sleeves on isn't, ironing isn't board. Something? Just thinking we'd all be walking around probably with wrinkled sleeves had <laughs> she not invented it or was the one. It's unbelievable. So, uh, how do you do your research? Where do you get your information? Uh, early on, it was basically, um, because there was not internet, it was basically through the archives, uh, the library. I spent a lot, a lot of hours in the library over the years, in the uh, mid to late 90s and up into the 2000s. And thanks to the information highway and the computers, I was able to start doing, still currently, do research on 21st century inventors and uh, just learning a lot about some of those inventors that may have been missed um, during the research. You're before. not for profit, right? We are non-profit. So if yes. people would donate to you, they can take this off their taxes. Tell us how to do that. Absolutely. Just like any other nonprofit, we are we survive by contributions and donations from the public, grants. Uh, it just depends on what we are asked to do. There's a cost to book the traveling exhibit. Um, we have a fee schedule for that, depending on if we're going to a school or a corporation. Um, we also have um, discounts mm -hmm. for organizations oh, that are okay. not uh, able to provide the full fee for the exhibit. And that's, we have those discounts because we have grants that come sure. in. Okay. And, you know, money's earmarked for specific things for nonprofits, and it's the same with our nonprofit as well. How, how much time in advance would one will have to book you? For, for, for an exhibit? Uh, Any time during February needs to be booked. If you're wanting the exhibit for February Black History Month, it needs to be booked a few months in advance, mm -hmm. at least 90 days, because February is the month that fills up, of course, sure. faster. Yeah. However, there are organizations and corporations that book the exhibit throughout the year, and usually they could call us and give us a couple of weeks' notice, and we could provide the exhibit on site. Oh, that's great. Yes. So, this other book here taught black inventors hidden in plain sight. Now, wow, that is something. Tell us about this book here, please. Now, that one I just received, and mm -hmm. this was um, also um, by a gentleman, Grady Slade Jr., mm -hmm. who uh, wrote this book because, like myself, he was amazed at the lack of knowledge and information sure. out there, and he wanted people to see in our everyday use of items, in our kitchen, in our uh, bathrooms, just, you know, everywhere throughout our home that we use every day, turn it on the light switch. He just wanted people to know that these are hidden in sight contributions. Well, what are some of those uh, inventors? Well, we can uh, see here. Exhibits there. You can see here, just, just along here, you can see the uh, ice cream scoop. Ice cream I like scoop. we love ice cream sure. and people just get the scoop and don't realize yes a black person invented the ice cream scoop. It was um, an old hotel, wasn't it? I, was, I think it was a waiter at the hotel. It was. Yes. It was. Yeah. And you have to think about it too. A lot of uh, blacks uh, in the early years, especially during slavery, we were domestic workers. Sure. And we had to make our jobs easier. So depending on what your job was, if you were taking care of the uh, children for your slave owners or, 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 or just whomever. Mm -hmm. You wanted your job to be easier. So the baby carriage sure. was invented by black person and it was, of course, making their job easier. They didn't have to have one baby on one shoulder and another on another shoulder while they were still trying to prepare the meal. So yeah, make your jobs easier, which is pretty much what um, this whole ideal of this particular book, Black Inventions and Hidden Sight, is about. Wow, that's yes. unbelievable. I'm yeah. sure for the, when they go through this book here, like I'm going to go through it, uh, I'll see some things that, that well, were 
I'm looking yeah, forward to it. As you can see, yeah. I've got my marks on yes. certain pages when I mm -hmm. received it. But this one can also be found uh, online at Amazon as well. Okay. How exhilarating are you when you discover some of these things? Uh, I can't even explain it. Yeah. I can't even explain it because I get really excited and you can get lost. Well, I can get lost mm -hmm. in the uh, research <clears throat> because when I start to finding different inventors that I know were significant, which all of them are, it, it's, it's overwhelming. It can be very emotional. Mm -hmm. yes. If a school wanted to book you to come bring the exhibit to them, how long would they have to book you in advance? Well, Any no schools? normally the schools are, are organized such that they have a specific event okay. or a date in mind, and mm -hmm. we do try to accommodate them. Okay. The only time we usually don't is that the exhibit is already booked for another organization mm -hmm. that day. Okay. Um, but, you know, they have programs and they try and book according to their programs schedule. You usually uh, elementary, grade levels, and secondary and high schools? So. All schools levels, yes. And then um, universities? Universities, community mm -hmm. organizations, wow. okay. um, corporations. We've been to, I think, University of Missouri probably two or three times in the past. That's wonderful. Yeah, Harristow State University. Yeah. We've been... We travel to just about every school or organization. Great. My guest is Loretta Redmond, and uh, we're talking about black inventors. And uh, we're here at the New Life Evangelistic Center, 2428 Woodson Road in Overland, Missouri. And uh, we'll be right back after this message. As we feel the darkness pressing in upon us, both personal needs and needs in the world, society as a whole, it's easy for us to get depressed. And when we're depressed and negative and feeling hopeless, we're not going to be able to help anyone. That's why I daily have to draw strength from the Word of God. That's why I have to go on walks in the midst of the wonders of God's works. And that's why I have to be able to see something that's worked for many, many years in my life, is that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, that He's with us always, even to the end of the world, and that we can be a light, letting His love and power flow in us and through us in a cold, dark world. There are people hurting out there. There's people that are crying out to God at this particular moment in the midst of their desperation. Can we be led by the Holy Spirit to them? Can we believe God to reach out and let His love flow through us and by faith help them meet their needs? That's the challenges that the Lord gives us in His Word. Experience the joy of really helping somebody else and letting the light and love of Christ shine in you and through you. Today's subject, Frederick Jones. An inventor best known for the development of refrigeration equipment used to transport food and blood during World War II. After a challenging childhood, Frederick Jones taught himself mechanical and electrical engineering, inventing a range of devices relating to refrigeration, sounds, and automobiles. Portable refrigeration units developed by Jones helped the United States military carry food and blood during World War II. He designed and patented portable air conditioning units for trucks carrying perishable food. Over the course of his career, Jones received more than 60 patents, and while the majority pertained to refrigeration technology, the others related to x-ray machines, engines, and sound equipment. In 1944, he became the first African-American elected to the American Society of Refrigeration Engineers. Jones died of lung cancer in Minneapolis, Minnesota, February 21, 1961. Frederick Jones. God loves a cheerful giver. Even though things are really tough right now, you can make a difference in the lives of so many. New Life has been doing this work for 50 years, and we have seen God's gracious goodness through people like you who have participated in this work. There are so many people who are suffering. More people are, are becoming homeless for the first time. Uh, with the rising pro costs of uh, inflation and food and housing and so many other commodities. We need help. You can make a difference today in the lives of so many by giving your tax-deductible gift to P.O. Box 473, St. Louis, Missouri, or go to newlifeevangelisticcenter.org or call to get involved in this incredible work. Now, welcome back. My guest is Loretta Redmond, and uh, we're with Black Inventors. She's the founder of the Black Inventors Museum. Uh, could you tell us um, the significance of traveling and taking it to different uh, schools and organizations to craft in Chicago? And, uh, you know, what do the people, I'm trying to 
put this in context, how do they react to sewing, sewing, seeing so much? Are they surprised at uh, what you brought to them? Yeah, usually the people are not only surprised mm -hmm. at the exhibit itself and mm -hmm. the inventors, but they're surprised at the size of the exhibit mm -hmm. because it's such a big exhibit. And it also uh, give, gives credit to the fact that there are so many. And I'll say to them, this is not even a fraction. Wow. This is only a fraction of the African-American inventors that uh, exist, you know, and they're usually really surprised, especially excited about the hands-on replicas mm -hmm. that we provide. And most of those, as you know, we get those from antique stores and sure. places that have uh, replicas of items. Are African-Americans still inventing things that uh, is worth it? Oh, going absolutely. To we've, we've got a uh, several inventors that we are adding and just recently added to the museum um the camera the um you know the cameras now that everybody use yeah. outside of their homes um the doorbell cameras not the one specific for the doorbells mm -hmm. but there are some that are outside of your homes that you can see people in there we have Certainly. an african-american female that uh, we have on display for that. Then we also have a 17 year old. Uh, she's uh, majoring in science, and Deja, and Deja has invented uh, some mechanisms used for the blood wow. and how to heal and do uh, various uh, medical procedures based on utilizing. It's just so, the blood cells, it's just so many, uh, you know, 21st century inventors sure. that. Uh, a uh, young man invented an NFL glove to, when you're passing the football, to make it so that the ball doesn't slip out of your hand. <laughs> it just sticks with yeah. easily yeah. Easy easy to catch. Easy to yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I, was, I was totally shocked to find out that an African-American woman uh, invented the GPS. Yes, you know? that was another one that mm -hmm. we're looking to, to mm -hmm. put her in as well. Yes. That's great. How do you select the people that goes into your exhibits? As long as an African-American and black inventor mm -hmm. has a patent, mm -hmm. you have to have your patent because as you know, if you, and we've had people come to us and they want to get in right away. They'll take it. And it's like, <laughs> no, you have no idea what can happen to your product if sure. you do that. So, and we never have any pushback. People are usually okay and they get their patents and they come back. But only if they have their patent, we don't turn anybody away that has a patent. Uh, and we're trying to focus a lot on um, female inventors down the road as well. That's wonderful. Tell us once again how to, to reach you. You can reach us at 314-313-9071 or blackinventors.org on our website. Are you on Facebook or any other social media? Still under Black Inventors. Yes, mm -hmm. we are. We are. So we can we go to Facebook and look on the Black yes. Inventors and, and there Absolutely. you pop up. Absolutely, and we'll be there as well. Anything that do you want to tell us that I haven't asked you about? Um, the Science Center, we have an event. Uh, every year we have been participating in a STEAM showcase at mm -hmm. the St. Louis Science Center, and the exhibit can be seen there, and there's no charge, and the family can go in and not only enjoy the Science Center, but they can enjoy the Museum of Black Inventors exhibit as well. This is wonderful. How, uh, how, how does your family uh, feel about you leading this society? Um, this? That's a good question. Yeah. I never really thought about, you know, what the family thinks. Most of them are pretty excited, you know, because they know that it's important history. But you know how it is with your siblings, and uh, you're just you're a sister, or brother, or aunt, or uncle, or whatever. It's no big deal. I do have some nieces and nephews that are out of state, and they're doing some really wonderful things, and they will contact me and ask questions about, you know, can you get the exhibit here and our okay. specific inventors. Thank you for joining us today. No problem. I've learned so much, and each time I talk to you, I, I learn more and more. Oh, well, I enjoy coming so to So please come back soon. Thank you for having us. And thanks to each and every one of you for supporting the New Life Evangelist Center, 2428 Woodson Road in Oakland, Missouri, 63114. I'm Bernie Hayes. Have a great day.